everybody. Hope you're all doing well. I'm all by myself today, unfortunately. Lloyd can't be here in person with me, and we attempted to do uh, use another technology, but it just wasn't working for us the way we wanted it to. So it's just me and you and Lloyd here with us in spirit. So um, I'm glad you're joining me again for another story time. And let's start at the beginning. We'll sing our welcome song. You ready? One, two. Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's story time, you know. We'll read some books and sing a song. Please, won't you sing along? Hi-ho, 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 let's go. Well, February is Black History Month. So we here at the library are celebrating this coming week as Black History Week. So we're going to read a couple of stories that celebrate and honor uh, our black history. Okay. <clears throat> This one, look, it has a maple leaf, so that means it's a Canadian book, and it is called The Stone Thrower. Let's find out what this is about. This is a story that happened a long time ago in a place that's far away, unless, of course, you happen to be from a small town in Ohio called Portsmouth. It's a story about a kid who lived in hard times. A kid who had a big dream that seemed almost impossible. Almost impossible. Chuck Ely was born in Portsmouth, Ohio in 1950. Back then there were separate schools and separate restrooms and separate neighborhoods for black people because some Americans didn't believe that all people were equal, regardless of their skin color. <coughs> Chuck grew up in the North End, a neighborhood that was separated from the rest of town by a set of long, stony railroad tracks. The buildings in the North End were run down and there was nowhere to swim when the weather got hot because the pool was on the other side of the train tracks. There he is cooling off in the fire hydrant. <coughs> Chuck's mother had, to, had dropped out of school when she was very young. She had to work hard to raise her son all by herself. She worked long hours and she was paid very little. She leaves during the day and she got back home very late. She wanted things to be different for Chuck. Those coal trains that come through, they don't stop here, she said. They don't stop until they get where they're going. I want you to be just like that. Do you remember where you're going, son? Chuck smiled at her with a big, broad grin. I'm going to get out of the North End and get my education. She smiled and squeezed him tightly. That's right, she said. When Chuck came home from school one day, he felt his tummy rumbling. He couldn't remember the last time he had eaten. The only thing he found in the cupboard was a wheat bar. He chewed and he chomped, but it tasted like twigs. It felt thin and dry in his throat. Worst of all, it still left him hungry. How could he get out of the North End if they didn't even have enough money for food? <clears throat> On a crisp fall day, Chuck walked towards the train tracks. He scuffed his shoes against the pavement as the wind whispered gently, as leaves tumbled and danced and cracked beneath his footsteps. Just then, Chuck heard a long, thin whistle in the distance. The ground began to rumble, and the train tracks shook. The stones along the tracks jumped and bounced like hot kernels of popcorn. Thick, gray clouds huffed and puffed from the smokestacks of the train as it chugged down the railroad tracks towards him. Went the train. It went as the dark coal cars crawled along the tracks like a trail of black ants, each one marked N plus W for Norfolk and Western. Suddenly, Chuck had an idea. He selected a stone from the side of the tracks and rubbed it between his fingers. It felt rough like sandpaper. He tossed it in the air and then caught it. Perfect, he said. I don't know what he's going to do. 
As the train charged towards him, Chuck fixed his eyes on the N on one of the coal cars. As the train passed and the wind whooshed against him, Chuck pulled back his arm and threw the stone as hard as he could. Thud! He missed. He picked another stone and tried again. Thud! And there goes the train past Chuck. As the last car chugged towards him, Chuck narrowed his eyes so he could see the end more clearly. He shifted back and forth on his toes and he waited. He threw and watched the stone soar. Bang! Chuck smiled and raised his hands in victory. He was very patient to see. After that day, Chuck often went back to the train tracks. Eventually, he learned to throw the stones just right so that when the train was going by and the wind rushed against him, he could always hit his target. Practice, practice, practice. At school and at football practice, Chuck did the same thing. When he learned new things and when he had, had to do the same thing over and over, he thought about standing by the railroad tracks throwing stones again and again until he got it. One day, his coach asked him to do something important, something that required a kid with determination and focus, two things that he definitely has. Chuck's coach watched, wanted him to play quarterback. He wanted him to throw the ball and lead the team on the field. Some people didn't think boys like Chuck were smart enough to play quarterback, but Chuck's coach believed in him, and so did his teammates. But it wasn't easy. <clears throat> At a game against a rival school, Chuck played a team that was lean and mean. The players called him names, and they ran at him with anger in their eyes and in their hearts. Crush him, they cried. Get him, they yelled. With a few seconds left on the scoreboard, Chuck's team was down by five. The team huddled together, heads bent down, arms around each other. They didn't want to lose, but there was only one time for one more, but there was only time for one more play. <coughs> Chuck got the ball and looked down the field as one of his teammates started to sprint towards the end zone. A player on the opposing team rushed towards Chuck, quick and steady, hungry for the football, hungry for a tackle. Chuck waited, his feet tiptoeing on the soft grass as the defenseman raced closer and closer. Chuck thought about those days at the railroad tracks, the rush of the train, the feel of the wind, the rumble of the earth underneath him. He narrowed his eyes so that all he could see was his teammate running faster and faster. So all that stone throwing he did was good practice for this. Chuck threw the ball and it soared through the air. It spiraled down the field, floating, spinning. Everyone waited. Everyone watched as the ball dropped right into the hands of Chuck's teammate as he stepped into the end zone. Chuck smiled and raised his arms. Touchdown! Victory! And this story is about Chuck Ely, and he won every game as the quarterback at Notre Dame High School. 27 wins in total. So by 1971, he had won more games than any other quarterback in college football history. And that just, is a, just shows you. He, so, and he actually, this book is written by his son. So, and then his family, they moved to Canada. So that's why it's, uh, it took place in the state, and it's part of uh, black history, and that's why it's got the maple leaf on it, because it also has a, a Canadian element to it. So just shows your practice and determination and you can beat all odds. So I think we're going to sing this little light of mine because it really makes me think that you can do anything and you let your light shine just like the boy in this book did. He grew up and beat the odds and he became a famous football player. So all right, so whatever your light is, let it shine. Ready? One, two, three. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. 
and you let your light shine there, whatever that may be. All right, let's read one more story together today, and this one's called French Toast. Mmm, did it make you hungry? Do you like French Toast? Let's see what this is about. This is a special book, too. And it also is Canadian. Even though Nanma's blind, she sees things others do not. So she calls her grandma Nanma. On weekends, I am her neighborhood guide. Today, I fall silent as we pass the school. I stare at my sandals, wishing Nanma could walk faster. Then one of the kids, the one who always carries the basketball, shouts, Hey, French toast! Another kid laughs. Come on, Nanma, I say, pulling her. The park is just up ahead. Near a bench, she stops me. Do they call you that name because of your accent? If it were any, anyone else asking, I would yell, none of your business. But with Nanma, it's different. I fidget with my zipper. Um, she puts her hands on my face and I look into her foggy blind eyes. And maybe because of my skin, my voice sounds uneven. She nods. Ah, I see. I've never known the colors of skin. What color's yours? Remember, her grandma is, is blind. Her hands feel like warm banana leaves on my cheek. Um, I say again, wishing my zipper would stop getting stuck. She's fiddling, trying to find the words she wants to say. Phoebe, she says, tilting her head slightly, your mind is as restless as the click beetle's nest. So I make up an answer, uh, like tea after you've added the milk, and I hope that's all I have to say. Nanma nods, oh, warm and good. I wonder about that. I don't always feel good. I don't feel good when strangers at the mall comment on my ringlets or ask me about my accent. <coughs> We keep walking. We pass the swing where, when I was younger, Ma pushed me to the moon, la lune, as she called it, and the teeter-totter where Pa turned me into a swallowtail butterfly and made me soar and dip in the sky. The pictures are really pretty. I guide Nanma to the bench. We pass a kid from school. I don't know her name, but she smiles a lot. I've been told your mom is white says Nanma. I laugh, not because Ma is so pale, but because white people really aren't white, not in the way that snow is white. She's like stirred peach yogurt, I say, thinking about Ma's comforting voice. Nanma smiles, sweet, but also good. I plunk down onto the bench. Oui, I say, which is yes for French, or in French trying to make my voice sound smooth like Ma's. The weather is so nice today. C'est magnifique. Nan Ma sits down too. I wonder if talking about the weather will be enough to change the topic. But Nan Ma sees more than most. And your pa? Uh, like ban warm banana bread, I say. Mmm, reminds me of home. I smile, knowing how great it is to bake Jamaican food with Pa. He's taught me how to make tamarind balls, ginger bula, and sweet potato pudding. That's a neat picture of her juggling all the foods she just mentioned, with her cat. <laughs> and what color am I? She asks. Oh, I say surprised. I wonder what it would be like not to know your own skin color. You're like maple syrup poured over for, for, I stop myself. She finishes it for me. French toast? I look away. But Nanma closes her eyes and takes in a huge breath as if she's noticed something yummy. Just remember, one of the girls or somebody who yelled out at her called her French toast. We sit in silence for a long time. I imagine the smells of breakfast and I think about the skin of those kids on the basketball court too. Toasted coconut and cinnamon honey. A frisbee lands at my feet. 
The girl from school, her skin is like chocolate hazelnut spread, shouts over here, and I toss it back to her. Thanks, Phoebe, she calls waving. She knows my name. <clears throat> After a while, Nana taps my leg. I've never had colors explained in this way before. That's what guides are for, I say, passing Nanma her cane. She reaches for it with one hand and offers me the other. It feels warm and good, too. I love how our hands look together, like French toast and maple syrup. When I am with Nanma, I like who I am. So I store this moment in my memory, the soft breeze, the trill of the songbirds, the girl who knows my name, and our hands together. What will you have for breakfast, Sugar? She asks as we pass the school. This time I don't look at my feet. Instead, I look straight ahead and say quietly, French toast. Yes, I like the sound of that. It's French toast for me. <clears throat> and there she is with her whole family. So she wasn't feeling overly comfortable in her own skin, but her nanma made her see that it doesn't matter, right? We need to appreciate everybody, um, even the ones that we see, the ones we don't. doesn't matter what skin color you are at all. It's what's in your heart and who you are as a person, right? So let's sing The More We Get Together, because I'm glad you joined me today. So we'll sing The More We Get Together one time, and then we'll sing our goodbye song, all right? There we go. One, two, three. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Cause your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. And I'm always happy to get together with you guys. I hope you're all doing really well at home. And let's sing our goodbye song now, okay? And I hope you enjoyed our, our story two stories, and I just wanted to point out we have quite a nice collection of stories here about um, Black History Month, week, that you could, maybe mom or dad or grandma or somebody could put on hold at home and then uh, come and get them from the library and you can share them together at home. We have a brand new board book, one's called Anti-Racist Baby, and we have another brand new board book called Dream Big Little One, and then we have a nice collection of other ones that... Uh, maybe somebody can take home and read to you so and you can learn a little bit more about black history month okay all right we're going to sing our goodbye song now one two three now it's time to say we'll be on our way we read some stories and had some fun see you next time everyone story time is done story time is done now it's time to say we'll be on our way we read some stories we had some fun see you next time everyone story time is done story time is done hope you have a great week take care everybody get outside play read some wonderful stories let your light shine learn something new and be kind and remember, you don't have to read every day, just on the days you eat and the ones that end in Y. See you next time, everybody. Bye-bye.